how to set up a hard drive you can access from anywhere. This can be over your mobile phone device, even globally. You can access it on your local network, on the internet. You can even make it a media server and have files on there for your home use. I'm gonna show you the software, the setup, and how easy it can be to get this set up. Be sure to check the chapters below to jump to the part that you're interested in. It's a Synology DS1522 Plus, which is the five bay desktop NAS network attached storage solution. So I've got all the hard drives. I've got the enclosure. It comes quite nicely boxed. That's like a third box I've taken out inside here. It's NVMe slots one and two. I have all NV two of these for the caching. Got a nice rubber feet on the bottom. Flip it all the way around. If it comes to you and you see the box really big, it's not too bad. It's actually quite decent. Fans in the back for keeping it cool, which would be nice. Power supply, which is, oh, okay, it's, it's quite a big power brick like a full-on power. I've got RJ45 cable for the connection to the switch. I've got keys to lock the drives in place. Just there, two little keys. Because I'm planning to either go RAID 6 or SHR2. I'll explain about that. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically how backed up your data is gonna be on the device itself. About a meter. A screw on, no, it's okay just to plug in. One is there, I'll go one. Mostly important uh, to be big. Okay, so I've got a couple of hard drives. Let me show you. Set it up. So the Iron Wolf and is the NAS series. These come out. One on that side, one on that side. That'll be this way. The drive in, and then you can lock these into here. That's one, two, yeah, that's in the cage. Nice piece. So that's drive one, which can go in just like that. Drive two is here. What, what drive are we using? Toshiba. This one is designed for network attached storage. Carry itself, you can just pull, pull, and then that drive. Just goes in into there and you need to face out. You see a little cut out here which allows you to line up. I'm just checking to make sure it closes in nice. So I go back here uh, again, just push that in like that. So you can kind of see that. So that's two. Got one more lined up there. Keep Let's push this one in. Okay, so that one's in. We've got three drives in, but this is a five bay system. So we're only using one, two, three. We've got two more empty slots, which we can expand as we go along, giving us more expandability for the future. I've got four terabytes in each at the moment. Depending on which setup you do, you can also put in some NVMEs at the bottom, which I have got two of here for cash. Well, terabyte, one terabyte, two 500s, which I'm gonna put here. But I have to set that up first and then put these in. Secondly, you don't put them in straight away. Uh, it's a bit of software on there that sets it up. So let's. So the good thing now is we've got three drives in the system: Seagate, Iron Wolf, and I've got two Toshiba designed for network attached storage, so for constant use. So one, two, and three. And when you put hard drives in, you've got little keys here, which allow you to lock. So for example, I know that one there, one, two, three. I'll, well, I've locked two, three. Four is still available. That the keys just flew I out. Know so that's the nice little spring action loaded there. So we lock that down. And now with that, I'm gonna set up on the computer. It comes with like a beefy power supply there, and we'll see how loud it is. You've got an arrow on there. No. Okay. So that is quite quite tricky because it's not really clear. Wait. Let me see. You've got a little bit of a spring loaded there. When you pull it out, it lets you decompress those. Yep, that's in now, nice and tight. For one, just like that. So now that needs to go into my switch, which is on the back over there. So there's two cables in the back, one power and one internet RJ45. Let me plug in the power. Now we're gonna plug that into the internet. The switch, that would be. So now, power, light flashes on the front. Now you should be able to hear it. Fans are on. It's actually not that loud. Hearing the drives power up now. Oh. You 
can hear the drives. Firing up, it's flashing up top. Status. Beep, which means it's ready. It's gone through the cycle and now we are ready to set up. On the guide it says, find.synology.com. I press that in my web browser, searching for Synology devices. So now we're basically here, finding that device on our computer. Oh yes, okay, perfect. So we've found it. Find your Synology to blah, 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 blah. Okay, status not installed, DS, yes. Oh, we've got the latest version of the software, which is good, so we don't have to upgrade the software. Let's go connect. Oh, so you user Please be careful. Limited software license documentation. You may make many reasonable copies of software for copyright purposes. Okay, yes. Here we go. We go. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. Limited liabilities. Okay. So make sure you read through all of that. Let's go to some data protection laws. Okay. And let's go on to continue. So now we are basically. Oh, look at the lights. Lights are on. Let's go. So you can see it's all fully firing up now. Oh, welcome. Welcome. So welcome. Set up your Synology now. Device info. That's the details. Close. Install. Automatically download the latest version of Synology website. Yes. Next, all data will be deleted. Okay, so we have three drives in the system. When you set up three drives, I've got one, two, and three. They are brand new hard drives, four terabyte each, and this is gonna clear them. So if you had drives you already owned, be aware, if you put them into the NAS, this is gonna wipe them. So I understand all the data will be cleared. Continue, installing disk uh, manager, DSM. It'll take a little formatting system. I'll let you listen to the 43%. I'm on a gigabit ethernet connection, so I'm gonna get good quality internet, well, LAN and WAN speeds. Uh, I will be upgrading my home setup. I'll let that do its thing, it's at 47% at the moment. I will be updating my home network to 10 gigabits, which will basically give me the highest amount of read-write speeds because I'm planning to video edit off this system for archival and live usage. And you know, I've already got some uh, NVMe drives, which I'm gonna put in here as well, but at 55% at the moment. So we're still working through the setup of this on the computer. We're doing this live. So everything that you will see me doing will show you if you have a problem. Is it easy? Is it hard? We literally been 35 minutes so far. It was packed in three different boxes. I took it out of the boxes, put in three hard drives, a Seagate, Iron Wolf, and two Toshiba drives, which I put into slots here. It's still going through the setup there. Restarting your DS152, so it's installed its software. Let's go over there, nine minutes, and it's counting down to let you know it's doing its thing. So we'll be ready in approximately 10 minutes. Please do not turn off the power during this process. So that's really good. I thought I was, I was ready for it to be very intensive, like set up this, set up that, but I've plugged it in, I've turned it on, it's booted, and there's a couple of clicks and now I'm gonna get ultimate storage for all my storage needs. You know what I used to use before? Let me show you. I used to I used to use that. I used to back up onto that, but now I've upgraded from this to that, and that'd be a lot better because this was only a Barracuda drive, two terabytes. We used to back up my computer onto this. So it's simply you plug it into that, just like that. That's what I used to use, but now we've got this here. I'll keep that there just so you can see what it used to be. So we're gonna come back as soon as this has done its thing. Okay, so now we've gone through the boot up stage. It's done its thing first time it was set up. We've come onto the screen, it did time out. But all I did was I went on to uh, find synology.com. So let me show you. Just here on the guide it says find.synology.com. I pressed that in my web browser and it brought me over to this screen here after the reboot took place. So now I need to give this device a name. I'm gonna call this. Okay, so I'm just gonna get into there. Whack. But I need to store this somewhere. So let me quickly write it down. Otherwise, I'll forget it and then I can put it into my software. Okay, so let me write that down. Okay, so what I've done right now is I've created a secure username and a secure password. I use Bitwarden generator, generator to create a secure password and that includes like a mixture of words, letters, spaces, numbers. And the next screen is saying is select an update option for your Synology NAS drive, which is right here. How should we upgrade it? So because this is a drive that can be accessed over the internet, you want the latest 
availability of updates to get all the security patches so nobody can get into your drawer drive basically so i'm going to say automatically install important packages updates regularly and is recommended so we'll go next and then we've got create a synology account to receive more benefits i will need to do that because i plan to access this worldwide so when i'm traveling i want to be able to access files on this and you can do that with the synology if you have an account set up that means if you're away from your house your local network all the computers at home your smart tv your devices can access files off this but if you're aware you can also create an account to access it while abroad how amazing is that you could be sitting in the maldives editing video on your nas at home amazing so i need to create that account right now so i'm going to show you the control panel on this as well so you can see what you actually get as part of it so i've set it all up we put all the drivers in there the good thing here is you can actually go wait let me go to the main window here so you will normally get uh, screen as this when you boot it up this is what you're gonna get you've got a package center think of that like your app store it's got a little uh, programs that you can run on the nas so backing up media server if you want to install minecraft you want to do a minecraft server you can do that with putty there's loads of little things you can do about that file station is basically going to show you your structure of your folders so i've set up a structure in there the folders that are on the nas who has access to them so that will be a nice point to definitely start off with when you set your volume up Put in a couple of new folders there you'll see here i've got different people that can access this three uh, users at the moment and keep your admin password totally separate you create yourself as another user and log in as a user uh, always just as an extra protection uh, package center let me quickly show you this so here you can see you've got package options so active backup for business it can back up your computers to the synology laptop computers desktops amazing you've got um antivirus you've got extra servers that you can set up on here cloud sync you can sync up this device with another synology device in another location so you can have like a, a copy of it redundancy you've got res replication snapshot so like rolling back different versions in the synology this is all part of that you can do synology drive and record cctv camera footage to it as well but that's like an overview there's loads of other stuff you can do so let me see saying okay I've, and you've got a little update there i need to do what am i using i'm using re replication services i'm using snapshot replication i'm using file station i'm using a media server and i've got a couple of other managers just to kind of help me maintain my nas go to control panel here is where the party is you've got shared folders that allows you to share between users so you'll see here i've got admin editor guest zolf abid there's a few different people here that can access the nas and that allows them different levels of access so if i go to my editor and double click on that it says here that's his name and the user group he's part of the editor's user group and then permissions he can he has no access to anybody else's folders he can read and write in the trusted creators folder because that's where i put my editing videos and i can set him a limit of how much he can use and even what folders he can use and that can come into a nice way of managing multiple people so that's a quick overview of the the settings there you've got also a control panel and a resource manager so if i show you that quickly as an overcap just to get you started if I come here you'll see it says resource monitor I can click that and that is telling me my CPU usage but that's on my network attached storage remember I can access this from anywhere in the world so I can check if my CPUs my NAS is doing okay it tells you the memory it tells you the utilization of the network speed and the volumes that you've got on there and what's being used so similar to like a task manager network speed you can see who's using them using it at the moment the processes that are running so overall it's a very versatile system i've got media server as well so i can access it on my smart tv so i think that's like a nice overview now that we've set it up i've not gone into as much detail of actually creating setting up the volumes i don't think you need that at the moment this is more of a overview to give you an idea of which steps you need to do i will do further little breakouts of individual sections because it easily this could be like a 30 40 minute uh, full tutorial but having it in sections lets you do little bits and then as you progress with it you can do more and more things one thing i would recommend is if you're using your synology nas you've put new drives in 
over about a month slowly move files onto it don't just move everything onto there once because new drives especially hard drives you want to give them a bit of time to make sure that they're going to be longevity if anything's going to go wrong they'll fail in the first couple of weeks so just make sure you're putting them on slowly you already have backups of your data and then you can start using the raid system that will give you a good setup and a good starting point to get it set up so there are some great amazon deals on these as well so make sure you check out uh, the links you'll see a price of the one i'm using here and also the drives that i used and also the ssd caches and that'll get you started in this journey but this is a nice easy way of doing it there are other ways of doing this free now as you can use qnap there's other makes and models i've just found that any questions i've had with the Synology, because it's so widely used, I'll easily find answers, videos, guides, everything's available to help you along in the journey. So that will give you a good idea of the benefits of having a NAS.